In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to factorize 33,000 embeddings in about three minutes. This video is inspired by one of my viewers. So drop me a question, comment. I might just do a video about it. Okay, so here's the setup. We got our document up here and Chroma DB down here. We're going to use Python's multi-processing feature to launch two processes concurrently. We have the producer process up top. This process reads the data from the documents line by line, chunk by chunk, and do whatever transformation to the data is necessary. And all this happens on the CPU. Once those lines are ready, it's going to put them into the queue. Down here in the consumer process, it's going to grab items in the queue and then factorize it into Chroma DB. Note that we are using a local model, so the embedding can be calculated using the power of our GPU. The data set that I tested with is the whole Game of Thrones script. It looks like this. It has the text. It could be a scene or a dialogue. Who said it? In what episode? In what season? And the show is Game of Thrones. So this column is always the same. Let me go to the bottom. There are 33,198 lines, not including the header. This is how much we're going to try to factorize. All right, let's jump to the code. The data set is from uh, Kaggle. Kaggle, I don't know. So uh, you can grab it from here if you're interested but it's also in my repository. In order to maximize speed, you do need a GPU and a NVIDIA GPU. So you can go to your task manager. I have two GPUs. One of them is a NVIDIA. With the GPU, you need to install PyTorch. Let's follow the link here. This is the sentence transformer that Chroma DB uses to factorize the embeddings. So down here it says we need PyTorch. Let's follow the link to PyTorch's website. Over here you select your configuration. This is uh, Windows. I'm using Conda, Python, and I'll just stick with the 11.8 CUDA version. Copy this command and install it in your Conda or pip environment. I already have it, so I'm not gonna run this. We import Chroma DB, the embedding functions, and then uh, it's important that we import multiprocessing. First function that we're gonna look at is the producer function. Here's my producer function. I'm taking in three parameters. The file name, which is going to be the name of the CSV file. The batch size. I'll get to batch size in a second. And here's the queue. This is the queue. Note that this is a multi-processing queue. We declare it later in the uh, code, so I'll show you that later. We open the file and we use the CSV reader to read line by line. We'll skip the first line, the column header. For Chroma DB, we need to pass in our own IDs. Since the Game of Thrones CSV doesn't have an ID that we can use, we're going to need to generate our own. So I'm just using an integer here. I'm starting it at 2 to match up with the line number in the CSV file since we skipped the uh, first line. These are the three pieces of information that we need to pass into the add function of Chroma DB. The document is the text. The metadata is the extra information. And of course, the list of IDs. And reminder, these are parallel arrays. That means document at position zero corresponds to the metadata in position zero, which corresponds to the ID at position zero. We'll read one line at a time. This is the data transformation that I'm talking about. All I'm doing here is to construct a document. I'm gonna say in season, season whatever, episode whatever, somebody said something, or if this is not a dialogue, then this is the scene information. Append the document to the documents array. Append these extra information, the speaker, episode, and season to the metadata array and uh, convert the ID into a string, append it into the IDs array. This is where the batch size comes in. Let's say our batch size is 10. We're collecting 10 sets of documents, metadata, and ID, and then we're putting that into a queue. We're emptying our list, incrementing our ID, and then we'll go to the next line. So in the code, we're reading one line at a time from the document, did some transformation, and once we collected a big enough batch, we'll put that batch into the queue. Now, before ending the function, whatever data is remaining in those three lists, we want to drop that into the queue. All right, so that is the producer function. Now, while this process is running, so remember this is its own Python instance. 
this is going and it keeps putting stuff in the queue. Meanwhile, the consumer process is also waiting for data to come into the queue. The consumer takes in the sheer queue, of course. It also takes in a flag whether to use GPU or not. This is really just for testing uh, if I want to switch from a GPU to CPU. Normally, we would just use the GPU. We'll point our Quoma client to the database. Path is my vector DB. It doesn't exist yet because we haven't created it yet. We declare the sentence transformer. We're using the local model here. You can follow this link if you want to swap to a different model. And then over here, we pass in device equal to either CUDA to enable GPU or CPU. Down here, we'll get our collection. This is basically our database, Game of Thrones, which hasn't been created yet. Now we'll start an infinite loop. We'll check the queue for items. If there are no items in the queue, this process is going to block right here until there is something in the queue. Once it finds something in the queue, puts it in the batch variable. If batch is none, it's going to break. So this is how we stop this infinite loop. I'll get back to this in a moment. The add function is where the factorization takes place. This is where we pass the list of documents, the list of metadata, and the list of IDs. Okay, so that is it for the consumer function. All right, so we've seen the producer and the consumer processes. Now let's jump to the main process that sets up both of these. Okay, here's the main function. When I run my code, this is the entry point. Note that in order to use multiprocessing, we have to do it in a regular Python file inside the main function. This is not going to work in a Jupyter notebook. Our first call to create a persistent client, this is going to create a database inside the my vector DB folder, which does not exist yet. On first call, it will create the um, SQLite database. If we call this code again, it will point to an existing client. We'll declare the sentence transformer here. We don't need to enable GPU. We're not going to do much in the main function. Down here, I'm checking if the Game of Thrones collection exists. If it exists, I'm going to delete it. If it doesn't exist, then it will just jump over this code. This is really for me to do testing, loading and reloading to test the timing. So if you're not reloading, you can just comment this code out. Will we create the Game of Thrones collection? Create the multi-processing queue. Here is where we create the producer process and the consumer process using multiprocessing.process function. This function takes in two parameters. The target is the name of the function that we want to launch a new Python process for. Producer and consumer are the two functions that you just saw up top. The second parameter are the arguments to pass to the target functions. For the producer function, I'm giving it the CSV file name, the batch size of 1000, and of course the share queue. For the consumer function, I'm passing in true or false, whether to use GPU or not, and of course the share queue. I'm noting down the start time before processing. I call the start function for the two processes. When these two lines execute, you'll notice that in task manager, there are going to be two new python.exe processes. So both of them are going to be executing concurrently and independently. We have to call the producer process.join function. This is going to hold our main function, which is this code right here. It's going to hold here until the producer is done which means that the producer is done reading everything in the document and queuing it up. Once that is done, we're going to put none in the queue. Remember up top in the consumer process, let me hop up there. Remember in the infinite loop here, if we encounter none here, this is where we get out of the infinite loop and stop checking the queue. We don't need this. All right, we do the same thing with the consumer process by calling the join function. The main, our main code is going to hold right here until the consumer is done. So once the queue is empty, everything's been processed into Chroma DB. The consumer process is going to exit. We'll just print the elapsed time and how many records were inserted into Chroma. All right, I'm going to kick off the run. You can see the creation of the new database right here. Okay. All right, so you see my GPU kicking in. My CPU is doing some work, but um, it's probably not going to be much load on the CPU. If you are on a laptop, 
Make sure you set your power mode to best performance. Make sure you plug in your laptop so your CPU and GPU can operate at its uh, max frequency. And if you got a fan control or something, like what I have with my uh, Lenovo, change the fan to maximum, your laptop's gonna get hot. Let's check the processes. You can see your GPU here, right click, get your GPU column here. Uh, let me expand VS Code. You can see one of these Python processes is hitting the GPU pretty hard. Okay, it's just finished in 195 seconds. 33,198 is the total count. I'm gonna hop over to my QA notebook right here. I'm just gonna send this query against the vector database just to double check that the data was loaded correctly. I'm gonna ask this egret repeatedly said Jon Snow knows what. Okay, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Game of Thrones, close your eyes, cover your ears for the next 10 seconds. Okay, you know nothing, Jon Snow, you know nothing, you know nothing. She says that a lot, huh? Uh, you're staring at my... Okay, that's different. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, let's go over to my chart and look at the results. Okay, so I did a few experiments on this 33,000 lines uh, using GPU. Batch size of 10,000 to, 10 to 1,000 isn't a whole lot of difference. You saw that it was 195 seconds when I just ran it. That's because I'm also recording this video at the same time, so it's a little bit slower. Okay, so it translates to five milliseconds per record. If I lower my batch size to 100, it looks like it's not maximizing my GPU, so that took a little bit longer. So you can definitely play around with the batch size. It definitely depends on what GPU you have. So this is something that you should not do, adding one record at a time. Let me jump back to the code. This is the call to factorize and add to comma DB. I passed in the document list, metadata list, and ID list. Passing in a batch of a thousand, it's much better than passing in a batch of one. So that's the one by one. Doing one factor at a time, it took 17 minutes, five, six times slower. Now I tried doing it with the CPU. I have a pretty good CPU, but compared line two, to this line. Line two took three minutes. The CPU equivalent setup took 39 minutes. So it's more than time, 10 times slower. And then definitely don't add one by one with CPU. This might take hours. Okay, so my code is in GitHub. Grab it, change up the batch size based on the size of your data set. Play around with it. Let me know in the comments how it goes for you. Hopefully this helped you load your data set a lot faster. I'll catch you in the next video.